My glasses! I can't see without my glasses! Kinsey, welcome back to my channel and thank you so much for watching. Today we are going to do another tag. I think it's been a little bit since we've done a tag. Let's do one now. I'm also wearing my glasses because for this tag I have to read and it's very hard to read to you guys when I don't have my glasses on. So here we go. This is the quick to judge book tag and I originally saw this on Jess the Book Freak's channel and she also had a source link for that. So I'll put all of that down in the description. Go check that out. Come back here. Let's do this tag. So the challenge is I'm gonna pick like five to 10 books in my unread pile. I'm gonna read the first paragraph out loud to you and I'm going to rank them based off of their first paragraph. And the top ranking book gets to be on my TBR. And since I don't really do a TBR, I'll just be reading it as like a top priority for you guys, all right? For my purposes here, I'm only going to choose standalones for my five to 10 books. I'll probably pick like seven or eight books. Mainly I'm gonna try and pick books that I had the intention of already having read them. So that way I can kind of, you know, put one, at least one of them on my TBR and find the most intriguing. All right, you guys, I have eight books here. I have some romances, mystery, Neil Gaiman. I have eight books to talk to you about, so let's get started. So once upon a time, I knew exactly what these books were about, and at this current moment, I kind of know what all of these books are about, but I would also have to read the backs of them to refresh and make sure I had it correct. Also, I don't want to read the backs to you guys, because what I did when I picked these books was really just went with a gut feeling and my vague knowledge of what they are about. So what we're just going to do is no summary, I'm just gonna read you the first paragraph and we're gonna rank them from there. I'll start ranking them as I read them so it won't be like at the end, you know? So you'll kind of know where we stand as we go along. All right, first we have The Kiss Quotient by Helen Huang. Uh, I believe this one is her first in this little romance uh, series she has going on. Chapter one, first paragraph. I know you hate surprises, Stella. In the interest of communicating our expectations and providing you a reasonable timeline, you should know we're ready for grandchildren. Oh. <laughs> All right. Fun start. That's kind of... So that was obviously mom speaking to her. I guess it rates number one. Poor little Stella. I know you hate surprises. I'm interested. I am interested. I'm intrigued. I'm interested. Number one so far, I guess. Okay, book number two, Beach Read by Emily Henry. I know she has another book that's going to be coming out soon. This year? So it has like one sentence and then a paragraph, so I am going to read that whole paragraph to you guys. I have a fatal flaw. I like to think we all do, or at least that makes it easier for me when I'm writing. Building my heroines and heroes up around this one self-sabotaging trait, hinging everything that happens to them on a specific characteristic, the thing they learn to do to protect themselves and can't let go of when it stops serving them. You know... When I picked this book up, I picked it up because I was well aware that it wasn't... I remember this because everyone was like, it looks like it's just a summer romance, but it's super emotional. And I was like, yeah, I can get that. But like paragraph one, that hurt me a little bit. Okay, over these two, man, I don't know. Maybe Beach Read is above the Kiss Quotient? Mainly because, like, I was telling my husband this last night, but I am a sucker for anything that talks about, like, the super emotional, or the lonely, or the not fitting in. Like, yes, that was my pain. That was my trauma. Thank you for acknowledging it. I will read or listen to whatever. Thank you, yes. I think Beach Read is above Kiss Quotient, paragraph one-wise. For me. Okay. Norse. I almost said Norse Gaiman. No. 
N I almost said it again! <laughs> Norse Mythology by Neil Gaiman. This one has uh, deckled edges. I love that. I love that feel. It also has this cute, like, flap. Love that for them. All right, I guess this is how he wants to start his book. So we have chapters. Okay, it looks like it's just like, okay. Interesting. I'm giving it more looks than I need to than I did with anybody else, but like no one really like names their chapters anymore or like their parts. So it has like a whole like table of contents at the beginning. I like to put, I like to give it like the attention it deserves. Okay, so this is like the players. Many gods and goddesses are named in North mythology. You will meet quite a few of them in these pages. Most of the stories we have, however, concern two gods, Odin and his son, Thor. One son, Thor. And Odin's blood brother, a giant son called Loki, who lives with, their, with the Aesir in Asgard. Hang on, two gods? Isn't Loki a god? I'm confused. Are you going to explain? Confusion in the first paragraph? I'm sorry, Mr. Gaiman. I'm so sorry. But like, the romances have you beat. Ruth Ware, The Lion Game, with this dumb Reese Witherspoon sticker on it. Dude, they put it on everything. There's even a reader's guide book club. You're not helping anyone, book clubs. Sometimes they don't label when it's a prologue, but it's like, so obviously, a prologue. This is what I'm talking about, about not having like chapters or a table of contents, right? Like. You wouldn't have to name this if you gave it a table of con or if you labeled it in the table of contents. I'm such a freaking nerd. The reach is wide and quiet this morning. The pale blue sky streaked with pink mackerel belly clouds, the shallow sea barely rippling in the slight breeze. And so the sound of the dog barking breaks into the calm like gunshots, setting flocks of gulls crying and wheeling in the air. Okay. It's not like, it's not telling, is it? We have a setting. That's all we have. We don't even really have, like, main character. Even in Neil Gaiman, he gave us, like, the players, but I guess that was his intention. I don't know with this. I mean, the setting is good. I liked the setting, but, like, we know nothing. Just that it takes place at the beach. And then there's a dog. And like, knowing that this is a mystery horror thriller, I'm always weary when they put like a dog or a cat in it because you know they're probably gonna kill it because that's just a staple. So we've made our decision. We're sticking to it. Here she is, right here. Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier. I really like this cover. I really enjoy it. Chapter one. Last night I dreamt I went to Manderley again. It seemed to me I stood by the iron gate leading to the drive, and for a while I could not enter, for the way was barred to me. There was a padlock and a chain upon the gate. I called in my dream to the lodge keeper, and he had no, <laughs> and had no answer. And peering closer through the rusted spokes of the gate, I saw, ooh, I saw the lodge was uninhibited. I don't hate when books talk about dreams, nor do I hate when they start with a dream, as long as it, like, plays a part. You remember that movie Due Date with Robert Downey Jr. and Zach Galifianakis, where it starts with Robert Downey Jr. calling his wife and telling her about the dream he had about the delivery of their baby, and it turns out it was, like, a premonition for what happens at the end of the movie in, like, you know, a metaphorical sense. I love that. Like, that is everything to me. It's, like, so beautiful. And, like, I know you can make an argument that that, like, is writing. Like, it, it that just doesn't happen in real life. But I don't, I don't care for that argument. You can't sway me with it. Well, I feel like it didn't tell us much similar to... It was kind of similar to the Ruth Ware in the sense that it didn't tell us much but it did kind of give us a sense of our main character, right? A feeling of uh, trapped, being unheard. Interesting. I am intrigued. Here we go. I just realized I've been holding these up and eventually I'm going to have to hold up eight books for you to see. Let's hope my arms can take it at this point. I, I haven't been reading very much, so who knows? I'm actually really excited about this one and I put it in here. 
almost hoping it gets chosen because then I'd be forced to read it. The Priory of the Orange Tree by Samantha Shannon. Okay, first of all, I thought this was a standalone. Second of all, turns out it ends off on a cliffhanger. And third of all, Samantha Shannon said that she is working on another book within this universe. So is it a standalone? I don't really know, but I kind of just want to put my face in it, right? It's like looking at a big cake. I really want to go get the bone season. Oof, God, I love a map. I love a map. You guys want to see the map? Do you guys love maps? Tell me your favorite map in a book down in the comments. It could even be like a map in a collector's edition. Ah! Tell me what, what book has the best art for you? Even a poetry collection, let me know. So it looks like the first thing that we have is like something from the Bible. And I know that because I, I've read the Bible. Mm. Okay, so we're skipping to the first one. It says East. Okay. The stranger came out of the sea like a water ghost barefoot and wearing the scars of his journey. He walked as if drunk through a haze of mist that clung like spider silk to Seiki. I mean, it just reminds me of Kaz Breaker, right? <laughs> like the pull I just had to keep reading. A part of me isn't even really surprised, but also a part of me wishes that it wasn't this way because this is the biggest book and it's really hard to hold this pile like this. Dracul by Bram, no. Doc Ray Stoker and J.D. Barker. I picked this up at Albertsons for $5. How dare they? For all those who know monsters are real. Girl, yes. You know, more than I appreciate a map and a book of a fictional land, I appreciate a map and a book of a real life place. Like in lore, they even did a map of like Manhattan or something. And like, I don't travel. This is what books are for, right? Put a map in the book. Um, they have a little intro for part one, but it's taken from Bram Stoker's Dracula and Max Mercury. I can't pronounce that, so I'm just gonna skip to the chapter one. It says, now. And it has a little sentence and a little paragraph, so I'm gonna read the little sentence and the little paragraph. Bram stares at the door. Sweat trickles down his creased forehead. He brushes his fingers through his damp hair, his temples throbbing with ache. This is from the point of view of Bram Stoker. God, I love vampires. Do I love vampires more than Kaz Breaker? It's a tough call, it really is. Oh God. Why? Why, McKinsey? I mean, the biggest books are on top. This is not, this isn't playing out well. Just for me holding the stack. I mean, so far so good. It looks like I get to add Prior of the Orange Tree. We have one more. We have one more book. Anxious People by Frederick Bachman. I added this because I was looking at books recommended for my zodiac sign because I was thinking of doing a video for that, but it turns out I've either read all of those books that are recommended for my zodiac sign or I have them currently and are planning on reading them fairly soon. So I was like, all right, I'll just add this one because it's recommended for my zodiac sign. A bank robbery, a hostage drama, a stairwell full of police officers on their way to storm an apartment. It was easy to get to this point, much easier than you might think. All it took was one single really bad idea. The first paragraph of this book is just the synopsis of this book. How much hate do you think I'm about to get on booktube for this? Comment down below. Uh, I don't really like that paragraph. I much enjoyed, even if Neil Gaiman's paragraph confused me slightly because I thought Loki was a god, this was very frustrating because I, that's the synopsis. The first paragraph of Anxious People is the synopsis of Anxious People. That's frustrating. So I pretty much agree with this. So it looks like I'm adding, oh my god, oh my god, Priory of the Orange Tree to my my top priority TBR mood reading nonsense. And I am not upset about it one bit. Not one bit. Hey, isn't that fun for you guys? You finally know a book I'm actually planning on reading. How 
exciting. What do you guys think? Did I, you know, based on the first paragraph of all of these books, how would you have rated them? Let me know down in the comments. That'll be fun to talk about. Also, I think it's very funny that like fantasy, vampires, romance, thrillers, and then contemporary. That kind of makes sense for me, right? That's kind of interesting. All right. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you have a good rest of your day and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye!